Hi everyone, this is Miss Soisin. I miss all of you. I hope you're all doing well and that you're safe. Um, what I'm going to do now is um, give you your first science lesson remotely. Uh, when you guys left before the whole pandemic and the closing of school, we just took our wave test and sound test and we were going to start talking about the electromagnetic spectrum and that's what we're going to do today. So hopefully you followed the directions on Schoology and you downloaded and printed the um, notes page. It's not required if you didn't do it, it's okay. But the notes page is a nice way for you to take all of this that I'm saying in the lesson and just kind of record it in a written format. You can use that notes page as a cheat sheet or a reference sheet to help you with the process grade that you will complete and submit on Schoology when you're done um, on the electromagnetic spectrum and electromagnetic radiation. Okay, so let's get started. Electromagnetic radiation wave energy. It's also known as EM wave energy. It's also called just plain old radiation. So this should look familiar to you. When we first started wave energy, I told you that um, if you want to follow my mouse up here, um, I did tell you that we would learn two different types of wave energy, mechanical waves, which we did already. Um, mechanical waves require a medium. The energy needs to get from one place to another by disturbing the molecules in a medium. When the molecules in the medium are disturbed, they can take the shape of a transverse wave, or they can take the shape of a longitudinal wave also known as a compressional wave. And we already talked about this. We talked about what makes a transverse wave take this shape with crests and troughs. And we said it's because the molecules are disturbed perpendicular to the flow of energy. And what gives a longitudinal wave that compression rarefaction look where the molecules are squished together or compressed and where the molecules relax and spread apart like you see right here. And that's because the molecules are disturbed parallel to the flow of energy. So sound is a really good example of mechanical waves. But what about the other type of wave energy? So remember, what's the purpose of wave energy? It's to get energy to go from one place to another. Electromagnetic wave energy is the other type of wave energy that we're going to focus on now. And the lesson is not very long at all. They're transverse in shape only, and we can break them into seven categories or seven types. So, before you left, your homework assignment after the waves and sound test was to complete numbers 13 and 14 to the wave research. And this is what number 14 looks like. I'd, if You can go ahead and pause the video right now so that you can pull this out um, because I want you, we're going to go over the answer key to it, and I want you to check your answers in your journal as we go over it. Remember that I told you that you should write your answers directly on this data table, and that you should glue this, uh, we'll cut it out, and then glue it into your science journal. If you don't have your science journal with you, um, you should, but if you don't, um, you can go ahead and print this directly from Schoology. So if you go to Schoology, um, if you go into the fourth marking period folder, it's black in color, you can see the assignment right there. It says electromagnetic wave research energy numbers 13 and 14. If you open it up, you can print out a blank copy of it. So go ahead and pause the video and pull this paper out. Okay, so the first column or the first row in the data table says definition. So mechanical waves, you already know about. The job of mechanical waves is to get energy to go from one place to another, to transfer energy. This is usually invisible to the human eye. Um, and in mechanical waves, the energy travels through a medium. In other words, it disturbs the molecules in the medium. And the way it disturbs the molecules 
determines the shape of the mechanical wave. So this is stuff that we already know about. But when we look at the new type of wave energy, the job is still the same, guys. It's to take energy and allow energy to go to from one place to another. It's the transfer of energy. Electromagnetic wave energy is pretty much invisible to the human eye except for one type, and we'll go over that in a second. The nickname for electromagnetic radiation energy is just plain old radiation. Some people say EM waves for electromagnetic, EM for waves. Um, and even though it has the same job as mechanical waves, electromagnetic waves do not need a medium. So we're pretty darn lucky about that because think about electromagnetic wave energy comes from stars and all of the energy from the sun needs to get to the earth and we take advantage of that energy, we would die without that energy from the sun. So we need that energy from the sun to travel from the core of the sun to the earth. And that would never happen because the earth and the sun, as you already know, they're 93 million miles away from each other, but that's 93 million miles of empty space, a vacuum of empty space. So luckily we can still get that energy to get from the sun to the earth because the energy travels as an electromagnetic radiation wave. So this is the second row in your data table and it's just a repeat. One form of energy needs a medium. The other form of energy does not need a medium. So when electromagnetic waves are released by stars in the universe and it travels throughout space within the universe, that energy is traveling in a vacuum. However, once that electromagnetic wave energy passes through the Earth's atmosphere and enters into the Earth, it has no choice but to interact with solids, liquids, and gases, to interact with maybe frozen ice, or interact with air in our atmosphere, or interact with water in the oceans. And that's when we're going to start to see that the wave energy will behave a little bit differently, and that's what we'll do in our first light lab um, when that happens, um, not next week, but the week after. Okay, so again, the third row of your data table, here's the answer key to that. Um, we already know what mechanical waves look like. We've talked about that before right here. And electromagnetic waves are made, um, I'm going to show you some diagrams in a second here, but basically um, they are shaped how they're named. So you, you have to have an electrical field and a magnetic field interacting with one another. And that will cause an electromagnetic radiation wave. So I'm going to show you a picture of that momentarily. How fast exactly does electromagnetic waves travel or do electromagnetic waves travel? This is the um, second to last column of your uh, data table. Uh, mechanical waves like sound, sound waves, they travel relatively slowly compared to how fast electromagnetic waves can travel. Electromagnetic waves can travel 300 million meters per second. We've talked about this before. Imagine that meter stick that I always use in class. Take 300 million of them and line them up tip to tip and then clear all 300 million of them in one second. That's how fast the speed of light is. We say that it's the speed of light. We've nicknamed that because when it was first, when the speed of electromagnetic waves was first discovered, it was discovered by looking at visible light waves. But if we look at X-rays traveling throughout the universe, or if we look at gamma rays or microwaves or radio waves traveling throughout the universe, they're all traveling at a speed of 300 million meters per second. Well, what's that like? That's kind of like 186,000 miles in one second. Like you get in your car and you can go 186,000 miles in one second. Some of you may know this, some of you may not, but East Coast to West Coast is about 3,000 miles. So if you are comparing the speed of electromagnetic waves or the speed of light to a trip to California, let's do 186, well, 186K divided by three, 
that's about 62,000 times. So that's basically saying I'm going back and forth between California and Delaware 63 or 62,000 times in one second. That's pretty incredible. And then here, remember we talked about the speed of light in air at room temperature is around 340 meters per second. That's still pretty darn fast. It's also known as Mach 1, right? We've talked about this. We can compare that to or convert that to 768 miles per hour. And that's very fast, but you can imagine how much faster the speed of light is or the speed of electromagnetic waves are. So where does electromagnetic radiation come from? It comes from the core of stars. And we've talked about that process of nuclear fusion. Um, it's a pretty advanced concept, but basically you're taking matter that's present in the core of a star, and you are having that matter interact to the point where it actually transforms into energy, an incredible amount of energy. And we call that radiation, or we call that electromagnetic energy, or we can also call it electromagnetic radiation energy. We also actually, some people are surprised by this, but we can see electromagnetic radiation occurring naturally on Earth, but it's at very low levels. It's not harmful. Things like rocks and soil and water release just natural radiation, and um, it's got the nickname background radiation because it's, it, it's there around us all the time. It's in our background, and we don't even notice that it's there. And then we've found ways that we can create um, electromagnetic radiation energy. There's a lot of equipment out there, uh, medically, scientifically, we use it all the time, um, even in our kitchens, right, to cook food. Uh, X-ray machines for health, nuclear power plants. Um, gamma radiation is used to treat, uh, when someone goes, a cancer patient goes to get radiation treatments, it's, it's gamma radiation that they're getting. And these are all different types of electromagnetic radiation that we'll talk about soon. So, all right, what does an EM wave look like? Because it's hard because most of it is invisible to the human eye. So imagine that we take a transverse wave. You already know what that looks like, right? You got the crests and troughs, crests and troughs. And one of those waves is creating a magnetic field. And then there's a second transverse wave right next to it that's creating an electrical field. So then what happens is those electrical fields and magnetic fields kind of interact with one another. They're arranged in a certain way. So I want you to imagine this. Just look at the one transverse wave that you see here in hot pink. Do you see how it's kind of in line with the plane of this plate right here? So imagine that that's the electrical field. So it's a transverse wave creating an electrical field. Then you have another transverse wave, and you see how it's in line with this sheet of paper or on this plane and it's going directly up and down so it looks like the blue transverse wave which is creating a magnetic field is going straight up and down but then if you look at just the electrical field the transverse wave that's creating an electrical field it looks like the crest comes out of the computer screen and then goes into and behind the computer screen and then back out in front of the computer screen so do you see how these two things are at a 90 degree angle from each other? Boom, boom. You see that 90 degree angle? So what we say is what does an electromagnetic wave look like? It looks like two transverse waves that are perpendicular to each other. So that's what we say, two transverse waves, transverse waves that are perpendicular to one another. One of the transverse waves creates an electrical field and the other transverse wave creates a magnetic field, and they are arranged perpendicular to one another. Now, I want you to imagine also that as this energy is traveling, look at this arrow here. We already know what that means, right? That's the propagation of the wave. Which way is the energy going? So as the energy is going this way, you have two transverse waves that are perpendicular to one another, but I want you to imagine that they're spinning around each other too. And that's what we say when the electrical field and the magnetic field are oscillating or spinning around each other. So the next, I have a little hyperlink here. Um, I think I have to close this.
So this is a visual that I've asked you to uh, check out before. And this is a site that you should have already visited. But again, here's the propagation of the wave. It's like energy is coming from behind the computer screen and coming out toward you um, out of the computer screen, maybe to your, to your right side. And just like any other transverse wave, look what we can do. We can lower the energy of the wave by lowering the amplitude so all of the crescent troughs get smaller. Or we can increase the energy of the electromagnetic wave by making the crescent troughs very tall and very deep. Notice how the speed doesn't change. It's coming at you at the same speed, which is 300 million meters per second. Also, when I mess around with the amplitude, I'm not changing the distance from crest to crest, like from here to the next crest. Uh, I can do that by changing wavelength. And you already know another way that we can manipulate and change the energy of an energy wave is we can make the wavelengths longer. So what we're saying is that we're disturbing the, the medium less and therefore there's less energy. Or we can make the wavelengths really short. Notice the speed is still the same. We're not messing around with speed because the speed of a, an electromagnetic wave is, is constant. Um, so what we're seeing is the, um, the distance from crest to crest or the distance from trough to trough is shorter, and then therefore I'm increasing the energy. And then if you scroll down here, you can just see another 3D version of how the two waves are perpendicular to each other. Okay, some other cool facts uh, we already know. EMR waves or electromagnetic radiation waves, they don't need a medium. They can travel through a medium because think about it, all of the energy from all stars in the universe that penetrate their way into the Earth's atmosphere, um, they're gonna interact with solids, liquids, and gases, but they don't need to. They can still, the energy can get still get from one place to another in a vacuum. It's independent of um, matter or molecules. They all travel at the speed of light, uh, cool fact. Electromagnetic radiation energy is energy. It's not um, a form of matter in, in a sense that it doesn't have any mass. Let's go back to the highlighter. Um, so this is something, if you get what I'm saying, great. If you don't get what I'm saying, it's okay. It's a little advanced. But what actually gives the, where does the energy come from in an electromagnetic wave? And it comes from something that we call photons. So I, I'm sure you've heard people say like photons of light. And again, when we say of light, that could be any type of electromagnetic radiation energy, not just light. It could be gamma waves. It could be light rays or um, ultraviolet rays or infrared rays or radio waves or microwaves. But all electromagnetic waves carry their energy in what we call photons. And if you go in deep inside of a photon, you're gonna see that it's made up of vibrating electrons, electrons that are actually vibrating with a negative electrical charge. And there's where your energy is all packed and found. It's, it's all packed in this little photon. And every single photon has a different amount of, of electrons. So if there's more electrons found in that photon, then that means that little bundle or photon of energy um, is higher in energy. If you have an electron, uh, electromagnetic wave where the photons do not have a lot of vibrating electrons in it, in other words, each photon is carrying a small bundle of energy, then we would say that that electromagnetic wave is lower in energy. And, he, and this is where it all matters. It's because of the photons, how much or how little energy is found in these photons, it determines the name that we've given that particular EM wave. So if the EM wave has a lot, the photons have a lot of vibrating electrons or a lot of photons of energy, then we say it has a high amount of energy, then we're dealing with gamma rays x-rays, ultraviolet rays, because that's where the higher energy electromagnetic waves, that's what we've called them. If we're looking at electromagnetic waves that are the lowest in energy, that's when you're looking at radio waves and 
um, like microwaves and, and things like that. So what we've done is we've created what's called the electromagnetic spectrum. And it's, it's just a diagram or a model that humans have created to kind of explain the different levels of energy that's available in an electromagnetic wave. So here's the seven different types or the seven categories of electromagnetic waves. And they sound familiar to you, don't they? There's seven total and we've organized them on the electromagnetic spectrum. So the electromagnetic spectrum is nothing more than, you know I love these things, diagrams, right? Diagrams model scientific ideas. So the electromagnetic spectrum is a diagram to model the different energy levels that can be found in an electromagnetic wave. So remember, if it has high energy, if there's lots of energy, that means that the wave is going to look like we're short wavelengths and a high frequency, you're going to say that it has a lot of energy. And then if it has low frequency, longer wavelengths, it's going to have lower energy. So now I want you to go back to numbers 13 and 14 to the wave research. This is something that we had you do for homework. We asked you to go to Google and look at all of the different diagrams drawn by different artists of the electromagnetic spectrum. And we, we said that you would see a hundred of them um, when you hit Google Images and just look through a bunch of them and see which one you related to with the most and then you would look at it and that's the one that you would copy into your journal. And you would want to also make sure that all of these terms that you see here that are bulletized, that they were part of your diagram. Um, so what I'm going to do is show you a couple of diagrams of the electromagnetic spectrum and I'm going to show you how you can look at any one that you've never seen before and you should be able to interpret it. You should be able to understand the story of the diagram. So take a look at this one. I just picked some randomly offline. So look what happens as I move from left to right. Do you see this red transverse wave? Well, first of all, it's a flat 2D drawing, but that's supposed to represent an electromagnetic wave, but we know that it's really three-dimensional. It's got two transverse waves. They're perpendicular to each other. They're oscillating around each other. One's creating an electrical field. The other one's creating a magnetic field, blah, 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 blah. But look what this scientist did. They said, as you move from left to right, the energy of the electromagnetic wave is getting weaker. How do I know that? Well, because this little diagram here says, if I move to the left, the energy is going up. If I move to the right, the energy is going down. I don't need that arrow there, there though to tell me that because look, look at the wavelength here. Do you see how the wavelengths are longer? Do you see how it's a lower frequency? That means less energy. Here's kind of in the medium, right? And then over here, the wavelengths are really short, right? Real short wavelengths, look how short that wavelength is. You've got a very high frequency on this end of the electromagnetic spectrum. So this is where the higher energy electromagnetic waves or the higher energy radiation is found. So what they've done is they, um, scientists have um, um, divided or categorized the different energy levels on the electromagnetic spectrum and they've given them names. So from here to here, why do I stop here? Because on the diagram, this is where they're saying, my hand's not steady, but they're basically saying from here to here, we call that electromagnetic radiation energy, we call it gamma rays. And gamma rays are the most harmful because they carry and uh, the most energy. They're packed with a lot of energy. And then from just here to here, specifically here to here, how do I know that? Because of the diagram down here, is what we would call x-rays. And then from, let me clear this out, I'm gonna do a different color. Take a look from here to here. It's not a large part of the spectrum, is it guys? Just from here to here, we call this light, but from here to here, we can break light up into three categories. Actually, let me correct that. It goes from here to here. We call this 
the light portion of the electromagnetic spectrum. But we can subcategorize that into three categories. Ultraviolet light, visible light, and infrared light. Okay, so I want you to take a look. Let me change. I'll try red. So what we're saying is right here, which is right here on the spectrum. You see how tiny that is? That's the only part of the spectrum right here. That's the only part of the spectrum that the human eye can see. Everything else, ultraviolet light, x-rays, gamma rays, all invisible to the human eye. Infrared light, invisible to the human eye. Now, some animals can see infrared light, which is when we say, you know, they can see at night because they, they detect the heat coming off of living things. That's because their eyeballs are designed to see infrared light. Our eyeballs cannot do that. But infrared light, microwaves and radio waves, they're all invisible to the human eye. Um, so from here to here in blue is the light portion of the spectrum. And we can divide the light portion of the spectrum to, into three parts, um, ultraviolet light, visible light, and infrared light. Um, I want you to take a look. We said visible light is the only light that you can see. And what does that remind you of? Does it remind you of a rainbow? Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. That's because we can take visible light and we can divide it into subcategories, seven of them. Red visible light, orange visible light, yellow visible light, green visible light, blue visible light, indigo visible light, and violet, in, and violet visible light. Um, so that's our Roy G. Biv, right? That's the colors of the rainbow. What I want you to see is this. If I delete again, erase my marks here, uh, do you see how red is all the way facing the lower energy side of the, um, of the electromagnetic spectrum? Think red is right next to infrared. And the purple portion of visible light, purple is also known as violet, right? It's right next to the ultraviolet section of the electromagnetic spectrum and that's where there's higher energy so when we look at another diagram done by another artist look what they did let's go back do you see how they flip the switch here do you see how higher energy is on the left and then as you move to the right it's lower energy but this artist decided to start the higher energy side on the right and the lower energy is going to the left so do you see how they had to flip the colors of the rainbow now the red is closer to the radio waves, the microwaves, and the infrared, the lower energy EM waves, and the violet or purple portion of the visible light spectrum is closer to the higher energy side of the electromagnetic spectrum, which is ultraviolet, also known as UV light, right? Um, X-rays and gamma rays. Here's another diagram. Look what they did. They're showing it vertically. I could easily flip this and put the higher energy side at the top and the lower energy side at the bottom. So you should be able to interpret this diagram and say, okay, radio waves have to be at the top. Uh, if these were blanks, you should be able to fill them in because you know radio waves is the lowest energy. You know that gamma rays are the highest energy and you know that visible light is smack dab in the middle. The lower end, the lower energy side of visible light is infrared and infrared is on, is the lower energy on the lower energy side. Um, the purple side of visible light is where right next to ultraviolet. So violet for purple, violet for ultraviolet. And you know that gamma is the highest energy. So really you just have to remember which goes where. Um, and that's just simple memorization. Um, but if you realize that they're organized according to energy level, it's pretty easy to see where you are on the electromagnetic spectrum. Again, look, can they have purple, blue, indigo, green, um, yellow, orange, and red going the opposite way? Absolutely not. The only way that would happen is if they flip this, if they put the higher energy side where the, where the uh, crescent troughs are closer together, then you would flip this where the purple would be on this side, right? And it would go purple down to red. 
which means you have to rename all of these. You would start with radio waves down here, and this would be flipped this way. Here's um, a horseshoe-shaped um, uh, version of the electromagnetic spectrum going from weaker energy to stronger energy. How do I know that? Well, they tend to use red for weaker energy and they tend to use the violets and purples to represent higher energy. I know that this part of the spectrum has to be the visible light because that's where I see the rainbow. Notice how the lower energy red is towards the red side next to infrared. The higher energy purple is next to, or violet, is next to the violet side. And then also I can tell that the energy is going, um, the energy is increasing as I move from left to right because of this arrow telling me that. But I also can tell because look, they're showing you that gamma waves, they have very high frequencies and very short stubby wavelengths. And as I move this way, like to light, for example, visible light, the wavelengths are kind of medium the frequency is kind of medium, and then if I continue to move to the left, the wavelengths get longer, the energy gets lower, and the frequency gets lower. Here's another horseshoe shape. I like this one because it's kind of showing a whole a bunch of different versions. They're basically saying that the visible spectrum, what your eyes can see, is only the red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet of visible light. If it's ultraviolet UV light, your eyes cannot see it. If it's infrared or heat light, your eyes cannot see it. They're reviewing the shape of what an EM wave looks like. And again, the arrows are telling you as I move this way, the wavelength gets longer and longer, so the energy is getting weaker and weaker. If I move this way, the energy is getting stronger and stronger because the frequency is getting higher and higher and the wavelength is getting shorter and shorter. So exactly how long is the wavelength? And look, they've given you analogies. They're basically saying that the wavelength, the distance from crest to crest of an, of an average radio wave is about as wide as a house or a building. It can go as long as the state of Delaware. Um, but then when you get to microwaves, there are, the wavelength from crest to crest is about the size of a baseball. But then once you get to infrared, it's like the pinpoint of a needle Ultraviolet light is very, very uh, short in wavelength. It's about the length of a one-celled organism, like a paramecium or bacteria. And then, well, look at this. Viruses are a lot smaller because they have to fit inside of human cells. Um, I like to say molecules. The size of a molecule is about the length of an ultraviolet wavelength. And then now you're only going to the size of an atom. And then inside the nucleus of the atom, that's about the length, the wavelength of gamma rays. So it's very, very small. Here's another model showing exactly that. But what do you think the overlapping section means right here? Do you see where radio waves overlap with microwaves and microwaves overlap with infrared and so forth? What does that mean? Take a look at this diagram. What's the fuzzy areas mean? Well, you know, I always say this in science, everything is not concrete. So what we're saying is scientists agree that from here to here, this is energy of radio waves. And then from here to here is the energy of microwaves. But this fuzzy area in between is kind of fuzzy. It's unclear. Some scientists and physicists will claim that this is high energy radio waves. But some scientists will say, no, I think we've entered the category of microwaves. So there's no definite spot where we can leave radio where we know we leave the energy of radio waves and enter the higher energy of microwaves. Um, so that's why if you Google how do cell phones work, okay, because cell phones, like there's cell towers there, right? They half of the websites will say that cell phones and cell towers use radio waves. But then the other half of the websites will say they use microwaves. And now you see why, because the particular wavelength and the particular frequency of cell phones is right dab in that fuzzy area where some physicists say, well, it could be radio waves, it could be microwaves. So we just don't know where, so we just call that, you know, the fuzzy area. And and I like this diagram, it's from um, NASA. And this is the entire spectrum. So this scientist is doing weaker energy on the left and higher energy on the right. 
But look at this whole electromagnetic spectrum. This is all the energy a star will release. Just this little section right here is the only section that the is the only part of electromagnetic radiation that the human eye can see. Everything else is invisible. So what about safety? Basically what we're saying is this, from light on down, we call that safe. Like you can be in a kitchen when a microwave's on and you're not harmed from that. You can be talking on a cell phone, you can be working with computers and using radio waves all the time and you're not getting harmed from that. You can feel the heat coming from a toaster oven um, or heat that's that's kind of radiating, oh, there's that word, radiation, that's radiating off of a, a coil in a toaster oven and you can feel that heat and you're not going to have radiation poisoning from that. You can look at uh, light outside on a bright day and the visible light is not going to harm you. But when we get to the ultraviolet side and over, that's when we say that if you expose yourself to too much ultraviolet radiation energy or too much x-ray radiation energy or too much gamma wave radiation energy, that it can actually destroy the DNA structure, the cellular structure of, of human cells and human tissue or just living cells and, and tissue where it can be toxic and dangerous. Um, this is why you have to wear suntan lotion or sunglasses when you're outside because it's not the visible light that's hurting you, it's the ultraviolet light that your eyes don't even see that's hurting you. But we can still use that for helpful things like, for example, ultraviolet light kills germs. Um, X-rays allow us to see inside the human body to see where broken bones are. If a person is ill, it helps us figure out what's wrong with them. So um, people who work in an like x-ray uh, radiologist, they need to wear protective clothing to um, make sure that they're not exposed to large amounts of this type of radiation. Gamma waves are very dangerous to human tissue, but at the same time, this is exactly what we use when someone goes in to get radiation treatment. But it's only for a short amount of time, anywhere from five to 12, 15 minutes max. Um, and then it's done and it's not like it's a huge beam of gamma ray radiation that hits the hits your body. It pinpoints exactly where the tumor is and it only focuses on the tumor. Um, but again, it's only for a small amount of time and all of the radiologists who work in that building, they have to be in another room when the patient is there receiving the um, radiation treatment because they're there every day and they do, they do not want to expose themselves to um, harmful radiation for large amounts of time without protective equipment. So that brings us to our last concept, which is where out of electromagnetic radiation energy, where's the safe side and where's the unsafe side? And we call that ionizing versus non-ionizing. So take a moment to read that. Okay, and that's your lesson for today. So what I'd like you to do is uh, go ahead and submit your, um, your process grade, which says EM radiation and EM spectrum. Um, it's a quick process grade, and you can go ahead and just submit that for today. Have a great day, everybody. I miss you.